I have the honor of being a professor of mathematical finance at Burbank, arrived in this capacity during the academic year 2004-2005. Um, previously, I was a professor of finance at ESSEC Business School, which is the number one or number two business school in France and later on was the director of a prestigious master in finance at the University Paris Dauphine. And so when I arrived at Burbank, I was supposed to teach mathematical finance. Uh, my education is exactly along this line. I have a PhD in probability and a PhD in finance. But uh, during my research on the so-called valuation of complex derivatives, uh, I wrote a paper in 1993 about the valuation of so-called Asian options, which are options on the average value of, let's say, a stock, and which present very challenging mathematical problems. So crude oil is the most famous example of the asset class called commodities. The asset class called commodities contains energy, crude oil, natural gas, coal, electricity, contains metals like copper, gold, platinum and contains agriculture like corn, wheat and uh, all the commodities which are used in the daily life of human beings. I have uh, uh, new PhD students, one, uh, f four or five uh, who started recently. Uh, one we will be defending in May, a uh, uh, piece of work dedicated precisely to copper, copper trading, uh, uh, comparing the situation on what we call the London Metal Exchange and, and China, China being a major uh, player, as we know, in the global world economy and China being a very uh, avid consumer of commodities uh, to, uh, to produce whatever exports they send to the US, Europe, and also to feed their large population. China has been very careful uh, uh, over the last 10 years about uh, properly feeding their population. Uh, workers have a, a life which requires lots of efforts and the food intake is an important element in the uh, Chinese uh, policies today in order to make sure that everybody is satisfied on that front. Hi, my name is Tara Velez. I'm a, a PhD student here at Birkbeck um, College. Um, and prior to that, I also did the MSc Financial Engineering also at Birkbeck. Um, and Professor uh, Gaiman is my supervisor. In recent years, given uh, the, the climate of global economic uncertainty and market volatility, um, more and more attention has been drawn to goods like paintings, fine art, uh, collectible cars, vintage wines, um, not just as collectible goods, but also as investments. Um, investors were looking and are looking um, for a place to to put their wealth um, in something of enduring value. Um, so um, this is uh, kind of how the topic of of, of fine art and, and collectibles, uh, prime real estate as well, um, caught our attention um, as a research topic. Um, also, with the increase in wealthy individuals. Um, over the years, especially um, in China and Asia Pacific. So a lot of new wealth um, looking for somewhere to put their money um, in, in tangible things that could serve as a, 
um, store of value and hedge against inflation as well. Um. Yeah. Okay, so Tara, you spent a number of years at Burbank, mm -hmm. uh, first as a, a master student in the program of financial engineering, then as a PhD student, and in fact Tara was supported by a grant here mm -hmm. because she, she was a brilliant student before starting her PhD. So tell us about your experience at Burbank in these different capacities. Um, sure. Um, well, as far as my PhD experience, well, first of all, my experience at Birkbeck has always been positive. Um, and secondly, as a PhD student for the last four years, um, I've been very lucky <laughs> to have an amazing supervisor um, who's been extremely attentive, um, a great mentor. Um, I've really enjoyed working with her. I've, I've gotten so much out of out of the PhD as far as um, the interesting topics we've covered, uh, the research process from finding a topic to, to um, submitting to a journal and, and the process of, of reviewing and revising and, and being accepted. The anxiety. Um, the, yeah, it's, it's been a real roller coaster. I mean, any PhD student will tell you that that it's a lot of ups and downs, but uh, it's made much easier when you have uh, the support of a good school and a great supervisor. So I'm very thankful and grateful for that, and I feel I am um, a better person, a more evolved person intellectually for uh, having completed the PhD. the list of publications have, has to increase. Very interestingly, I, I have a website dedicated to my modest person with all the papers I published, the conferences where I was a keynote speaker, uh, the topics of the PhD defended, and the places where my beautiful PhD students landed from Singapore, to the US, to London and Frankfurt. And very interestingly, uh, each PhD student uh, takes her or his turn in maintaining the website, and Tara has been the one doing it un until today. And so clearly, uh, including uh, to get new master students in order to get new PhD students, whatever we have published year after year is visible and, and contributes, obviously, to the image of Birkbeck outside. Today we know that even to teach in a master program, your research needs to keep going, in particular in a field called finance in general, where so much is happening and where uh, the picture is different. The picture was different before the crisis of 2008, uh, different today and year after year with what we call robot advisors and so on. So uh, I am a strong believer in research and I work like seven days a week and my PhD students are very uh, positively uh, enthusiastically uh, join that pace. Absolutely. I think we should also mention that uh, Heliot has uh, a book that was recently published last year in Agricultural Commodities, and um, also the Commodity Finance Center has been going now for, for more, than, more than 10 years. Yeah, it would. I, I created it in 2006, so now it's the 11th year, and we try to organize events. Uh, we try to, to show that papers are published. 